You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, how to look years younger without surgery. With us, we have registered nurse, Adrian Bloom. Adrian, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. Glad to be here. Now, we've had you on the program before. Yes. And for people that don't know, she works at uh, the Cosmetic Surgery Institute mm -hmm. of Palm Desert with a plastic surgeon, I guess that everybody knows, Dr. Mo Dr. Zachary. Dr. Mo. And I've had you on the show at least two or three years ago. Uh-huh, about so, two years ago. Back then it was just esthetician, taking care of skin. Yes. Now you're doing lasers and you're an RN. I am an RN now. So what is your role? I do chemical peels, I act as an esthetician, and I also double as a registered nurse doing Good. laser treatments. Now, at the top of the show, Mm -hmm. We said you could look years younger without surgery. Do you believe that? Absolutely. With lasers Absolutely. and things like that? With lasers, skin treatments, uh, just refreshing the skin. You know, nowadays it's so great because there's so many different options that you can take. With okay. the technology advancing and just what's out there. And sometimes it can be really overwhelming. I sometimes get overwhelmed myself sometimes. But it, it really can make a difference with the skin. So who is uh, the typical patient? When should somebody get a fractionated laser? Well, that's a great question. I get asked that all the time. Um, I get treatments myself. People always say, why would you have a treatment? Because you have it, great skin. Yeah. Thank you. It, it, I never used to. It's just, it's constant maintenance and taking care of it. But people always ask, you're so young or you're, you, you know, your skin, you already have good skin. Why, why fix it? And uh, Dr. Pericone. That's right, he wrote the Pericone Principle. Mm -hmm. The dermatologist, right? The dermatologist wrote okay. the Pericone Principle, um, world renowned for anti aging. Uh, he stresses the importance of starting s to stimulate the collagen early okay. in, in, in your life. So, 20s, 30s, 20s may sound a little young, but with time, I mean, you think about your, your skin now when, or when you were younger you know, you fall asleep and you, you have a wrinkle on the face, it goes away in a couple hours. That's right. Right? Well, when we age, it, not so much anymore. It, that wrinkle tends to stay there. So by getting laser treatments or stimulating that collagen earlier uh, in, in, in life, it, you have a bigger surplus. And with time, the, the skin will just keep continuing to build and to grow. So with fractionated lasers, so I understand this correctly, mm -hmm. it's not like you're peeling off the skin the wrinkles. You're no. actually heating the underlying skin and it fills in the wrinkles. Exactly. With, with collagen. Exactly. Is that right? Well, we're creating little microscopic channels and we're, we're heating up that tissue, that those deep dermal layers and underneath the skin. Uh, we heat that up and what happens is there's healthy tissue around these channels. Uh, by keeping healthy tissue around the channels, the skin heals faster. You okay. stimulate collagen, you stimulate elastin, and, and slowly with time over two and three months, the, the skin will start to repair and build itself, filling in acne scarring, filling in lines and wrinkles. And also with the erbium, we treat the surrounding skin around the wrinkle. So not only are we from, from the dermal layers lifting the wrinkles, we are also resurfacing the surrounding. So we're actually kind of debriding and resurfacing the skin around the wrinkle. So it, it matches. So you're, you're getting the effects both superficially and uh, dermally. Okay, so you could make somebody, we said, years younger without Absolutely. surgery. You could take somebody 50 and make them look 40? In your opinion? Why not? <laughs> Is that, I mean, have you seen that? <laughs> yes, in the absolutely. And you know what? Over a couple years, I have patients coming back in and they're reversing an age. And it's who doesn't want to reverse but, an but age? But we had a discussion in my green room over there. Uh -huh. And it was very interesting what, what, what we were talking about or what you were talking about. And that is that you could take somebody 35 right. and 10 years from now, right. they may look. You know, we can't prove it. But in all honesty, it, it, I believe that in 10 years, they will look virtually the same. They will have the, probably even better. Okay. You know, the, the, the pores will be tighter, the skin will be smoother, you'll have that youthful, radiant glow that still looks natural. And that's what we, we want to focus on. And that's so many women, men too, I, they just don't want to look unnatural. And, and they don't want their friends to notice. So with gradual treatments, and especially with Fraxel, you know, it, the skin improves over, over, over time. time. And but, uh, but the downtime could be a couple of days? If you go light, two, if, three days? If you go light, I just had it five weeks ago and we, we, it was very light. 
and uh, but if if light is what you want, we can go light, and it takes three days. So it's three days. The, the next day just looks like you've been in the Caribbean for a really long time. You're 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 a little brown and red and tight, and then it starts to just kind of slough off. And what that helps with with pores. So many clients want help with the pores, you know, just a smoother complexion. So you're heating the fractionated laser, mm -hmm. you're heating the uh, underlying tissues, right? and the body repairs, repairs by laying itself. down new collagen. Exactly. Filling in some of the wrinkles. Exactly. Lifting, lifting those wrinkles. Do you think people could avoid a facelift if they go in early? Your own personal opinion. You get somebody in the 28, 30 years old, I'm getting right. your opinion here, Right. and you do some of the fraxels, and you do it consistently, and you do some of the treatment, do you think that... It's prevention. In one word, prevention and maintenance. So I do again. I can't prove it, and maybe some people w will need surgery. Do you I'm think not your against. Thirty-five year olds and forty year olds in ten years are going to look about where they look today if they Absolutely. follow your Absolutely. protocols. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about in twenty years? No doubt. In tw twenty years. I, twenty years. I'd probably hold that too. Too. <laughs> about the same. I honestly, okay. honestly, it makes such a big difference, and I, I, I'm very passionate about it. And, and just seeing the results firsthand and off clients and it just it really makes a big difference and we're all so excited so let's talk about red spots and brown spots right which what is a major concern what can you do for this well it, it, pulse light is is the most popular you know you need a couple treatments uh, but it really targets pigment unfortunately red is harder to eliminate than browns but it there is hope. But browns isn't that what most people you know, in it, your 40s worry about browns absolutely and especially up? living in the desert golfers uh, active lifestyles playing tennis they oh that is the number one complaint when they come what into the office what about olive skin can you I mean because I, I understand that there's a next generation of lasers exactly that can, do it. can yours do it absolutely olive skin so if you have that darker ol olivey complexion you can come in and, and it will be safe and effective for your skin type. Laser technology. Right. And th you think that's a feature then of looking oh younger? Gosh. Is that part of every... It's cutting edge. It's cutting edge. It's, it, and, and it keeps changing. It keeps evolving. It keeps getting better. You know, before we had Retin-A and antibiotics or Stripe, you know, but now in addition to that, I'm not, Retin-A is fantastic. I have a lot of clients on Retin-A. Okay. But there are other options. There are other options out there. And uh, it's just, it, lasers are exciting. They're exciting. Okay. And so if a patient's watching this, mm -hmm. okay, so, so what is the questions you have for these people? How much downtime can you tolerate? Right. So like five days, 10 days? Again, lifestyle. If you can tolerate the downtime, we can go a little deeper. We can get really be aggressive with the skin. Uh, if you don't want the downtime, we can do another type of laser. We can do the IPL or the BBL. The, there's so many different options. So depending on your lifestyle okay. and what you want to do, just come into the office. We'll assess the skin. We'll put you on a treatment program, and we'll go from you there. You see transformations all the time. Absolutely. And that's what, what warms the heart. That's what makes getting up in the morning and going to work that much better is the confidence that exudes these patients when, when, once they leave. Getting, you know, coming in and saying, oh my gosh, I've, I've never thought that I would have a good complexion. I never thought that, I never thought anybody would ever say that to me. But there are options that you, you can have, there's hope, you know, and, and you can get that, that self-esteem back and, and. Because people are dating. So, so are people, right. by the way, People that are watching this, 60s, 70s, 80s, that's young in the desert. It is. It is young. What do you say to those people that are maybe resistant to getting it done, getting anything D done? You know, it, it, there's different levels. If it, it, a, lot of, a lot of clients come in scared, not knowing. It's What's a their whole, fear? What is their fear? Well, you know, we see on TV uh, these uh, Botox gone bad or, you know, these chemical peels where you look really burned. And, and it's really not the reality of it when it's done correctly. And, and you really, the, the results are, are to speak for themselves. And, you know, you see. So you don't the, want to look like you've had anything done. You just want to look fantastic for your age. Right. Is that the goal? Exactly. Natural beauty. Because great skin, you know, we talked off camera. Right, I mean, look, right. women want to know what guys talk about. Okay, right? But behind their back, <laughs> great skin is sexy at any age. When you see somebody with great skin, that's a standout. Absolutely. That's, big. that's Absol a big thing. That radiant glow from across the room, it just, it really does a number. It, and you can let, you don't have to live in the skin that you're in anymore. And you can really improve at any age. 
you know, I was talking about starting younger. But even if you start later in life too, it's, it's, it's okay. It, we can still achieve results. Okay. Do you have a competitive nature where you say, I, I, I want to I turn this around for these people? I do, I, because, of, because of my past. And I, I know that it, it works. So I, I just don't want anybody to get frustrated and to give up. Because Are there people like that? Absolutely. They All just the think I'm they too just, far gone. Yeah, I'm too far gone. Oh, honey, you can't fix this face. Oh, I, I this old thing, and it's not the case. It, we, I'm not Good. saying that I, I'm. You know, we're gonna take, you know, and, and make you look now, like but, you're. But it's affordable now. And it's affordable. It's affordable. It's look. there's a lot of competition out there, so you, you kind of have to be affordable. Thank you for coming on the show. Very Thank good. you, Randy. Very good. Likewise. Uh, you're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. Up next, what you need to know about fillers. Are they a good idea? We'll be right back. You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, how to look years younger without surgery. We're talking about fillers, facial fillers, dermal fillers, and Botox with uh, the go-to person for Botox in the desert. Uh, and she is a registered nurse. She works with Dr. Mo Zachary, the board-certified plastic surgeon. It's Peggy Murgo. Peggy, welcome to the program. Hi, Randy. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you again. Thank <laughs> you. say you. that, you know, for people that don't know, we, I've, I've been going to you for Botox. I think for at least 12 years, maybe Since 13 years. 2001, that was and, the first time. Uh, so, so I think, and I, and I said this uh, on another interview, I think that Peggy gives the best Botox possibly in all the world. Well, thank you. Because <laughs> people, <think laughs> people think Botox, that it's all the same, but it's not. There's a lot of technique to it. There's a lot and of the technique. And the way you do it, which won't, I won't give away your secrets, but the way you do it is different than anybody does it. I believe that to be Because you're fast. True. You do it kind of a... Yes. You have I, a little bit of a... I think it hurts less when you're quick. And I learned that about 12 years ago to inject it a little more quickly so that it doesn't hurt. So I try to keep it as relatively painless as possible and effective. Okay, so we're going to talk about fillers today and Botox. For people that don't know you, by the way, Yes. what is your role there at the Cosmetic Surgery Institute? You guys also call it CSI. Yes, okay. CSI for sure, What's your Cosmetic role? Surgery Institute of Palm Desert. Well, I'm a registered nurse, director of nursing. I worked in the operating room for many years, and I've been doing surgery and mostly fillers and Botox since 1996. And so that's my specialty area, fillers and Botox and, and some laser resurfacing. And so I'm, I kind of do quite a few things there, but primarily the fillers. And you have a high-end clientele. Uh, you yes. have celebrities, right? Yes, we do. And you have uh, just regular people, by the way, now. Is that right. true? I mean, From just 18 to I mean, police 91. officers, firemen, I mean, everybody's <laughs> getting Botox now and fillers? Yes. Is it's, that right? It's like mainstream. I believe it's mainstream because of all the TV promotion and all the glamour shows that are on. And it's much more affordable now than it used to be. So I, I have clients from 18 to in their 90s. We have a number of clients that are in their 90s now that still come to us Is and are right? still looking good. Are there some people that are actually embarrassed that they get Botox? Yes, they don't want anybody to know and they feel guilty about spending the money on something that some people view as trivial. But I say if it makes you look softer and less angry and it helps you to feel better, why not? Three guarantees in life, uh, this is my joke, death, taxes, and Botox. It works. <laughs> I mean, it gets rid of wrinkles. I like that. Can it I does. quote you on you, that You one? can't quote me on that. Okay, so there is technique to Botox. So let's, yes. for people that, by the way, they know about Botox. Okay. They've heard about Botox, but they can't get themselves to get it for fear of whatever. What right. do you tell them? They're in their 30s, 40s. They've got these lines, forehead. I hear a number of reasons for not wanting to do it, although they're interested, and they'll come in just to talk to me sometimes because they've been thinking about it for years. They see friends that have had it done and they're really looking good and they want to too. But the fear is, well, you're injecting poison. That's, that's what I'm often told. Well, it's botulism, botulism toxin type A. It's one billionth of a gram. It's regulated by the Center for Disease Control it's and safe the FDA. Though. I mean, it's proven to be safe yes. now. Yes, okay. and there's never been a recorded case of botulism from Botox, and it's been around a good 30 years in the United okay. States. So for avail available for cosmetic use since 2001. So I've done, some, sometimes in a year, I'll do over 3,000 clients. We have a really big business, and I've not had any bad side effects or allergic reactions. Knock on wood, good for you, good for you. Thank you, God. But Botox, <laughs> what's the most popular area? 
for Botox? Between the eyebrows. By far, right between there. the eyebrows is the most popular. On label use, that's what it is um, FDA approved for. Off label use, we do sometimes foreheads, crow's feet, corners of the mouth to turn up the corners of your mouth, purses so people don't purse their lips as hard and look I've like they're sucking I've never heard that before. Let me hear that again. What is that? The purse lip. Some people look like so they're you sucking Botox a lemon. Their lip? So we put a little bit of Botox on their upper that? lip and it softens the purse so that they don't look like they're sucking a lemon all the time. And some it's genetic whether you have that, some people don't. So there's many, we do it for underarms so that it helps you last up to six months so that you don't perspire. You don't, is that right? Does that, that work? Go, Does that work? Yes, I do it myself. Does it hurt? So it doesn't hurt. You're kidding me. A little me. bit less than a facial Botox. Come, well, it seems like you would let your friends in on this. You I never do. offered it to me ever. <laughs> well, never I didn't talked think about you needed it. I, well, didn't, I didn't want to talk because you never brought it up. I thought it didn't work. It, so it's it called works. hyperhidrosis and especially at the um, Grammy Awards and the Oscars when they're wearing those wow. $10,000 plus dresses, they Botox their armpits so that they won't get stains on those expensive designer gowns. So it's quite a popular thing to do in Hollywood. How often do you do this? Once a month? Oh, with Botox under, under the arms? arms? All the time, but you like every week you do it. I no, I'm saying you personally. Oh, it lasts a, about six months, so twice but a I year. But I mean, how common is this procedure in your practice? Oh, pretty common. Up at least once or twice a month. It's because okay. it costs okay. a little more because you have to use more Botox. It's maybe not as popular as doing the little areas on the face. Between the eyebrows is by far the most popular. And that said, there are other botulism toxins out there now. We have Dysport by Metasys and Xeomin by MERS Aesthetics. Companies are always merging and we have Botox. So we have three choices now. What's in the botulism best? Okay, toxins. so let's talk about the, because I guess people look like they're mad and this is one of those things that can make you not look mad right. or tired what, what or angry. What happens as we age, and again, you can look at mom or dad, it's genetic. Either your eyebrows tend to fall in as your brow is coming down with age and you look angry or they fall out and you look puzzled. And so with Botox, you can keep those wrinkles away and kind of shape the brows back where they were when you were a little younger. And it helps you to not look puzzled or angry and tired and especially wrinkled. <laughs> okay, how does Mainly your, now wrinkles. with the forehead, so you do the forehead, yes. crow's feet. I've heard some people say, there's mixed reviews here. Okay. Don't go into the eyes with Botox. Be careful around the eyes with Botox. Well, you have to be careful, yes, because if you don't inject in the proper places, you can paralyze your upper lip temporarily always. Botox is always temporary, but you have to place it correctly so that you don't so have So you're not sunbeam. afraid to do that because you do not it for all. me. Not at all. I have been doing Botox for 16 years. I do it, it seems like all day, every day during the week. You've probably done and more I Botox than me in the desert. Is that true? I would think so. I would like to think I mean, you've so. You've done thousands, thousands of Botox. A year. Yes. A year. So for but many years now. But is there a learning now, curve? I mean, are you that much better now than you were when I first met you? I Do you think? believe you, so. Because well, Botox seems straightforward. I mean, but are you that much no, better? It, there's, there's a very advanced Botox injection and there's beginner injections. In fact, I'm training somebody this week. I train doctors, nurses, and physician's assistants to do Botox. So I've been teaching it for a long time. And I usually tell you, in your first two years of injection, just stick to primary injection technique. And then when you get really comfortable with where you're placing it, you can evolve to more advanced So techniques. if you go to somebody that knows what they're doing and they get it done right the first time, yes. ultimately it's less expensive to go to somebody that knows what they're exactly. doing. Exactly. Is that right? Because it will last longer, it'll work Good. better. Okay. Fillers. <laughs> so let's talk true. about fillers. Let's move into fillers. Okay. So many fillers. It's so really let's then begin with who should get dermal fillers and what can it do for your appearance? Who should get dermal fillers? Well. Again, it comes down to genetics and the things that bother you. The most common area, again, nasolabial folds. That's this area right here. Yes. I have people in their 20s, especially really athletic, fit people, that that begins to show up in their mid to latter 20s. Now you say it can soften the appearance. Elaborate on that. Yes, it absolutely softens the appearance. And that's why I get some of the younger gals, especially the very lean, fit, athletic people, they have a low percentage of body fat and the folds begin to show on their face and it makes them look harder. It makes them look a little older than, and they're okay. not that old. So it makes you look harsher and older. And when you add in the filler, they just look softer and prettier. And it's not something that people will look at you and know what you've done if it's done well. They'll just look at you and think, wow, you're looking great. You're looking rested. Did you change your hair? They won't know. So that's how it should what be done What about the older subtly. patient? Is it becoming more popular? 
very popular with the older patients because people are living much longer and they're living a fit, healthy life and they want to look as good as they feel. Why are some of the, what, what are the ages of some of the oldest patients you have that get fillers? I have a handful of clients in their 90s, 89 you to 91, that have been coming to me for years and they still <laughs> look great. You would never guess their age. Is and that usually right? they're women dating younger men. I have a few men dating younger women. And that's why they come to me because they don't, they don't want to look as old as they are because they feel young inside and they want their outsides to match. Somebody said, uh, or, or no, we had a conversation on the phone. You said a lot of the 80 year olds in the desert, Randy, let me tell you about them. They're really 90 year olds. That's true. <laughs> because they look younger with fillers it's and Botox. True. That's They're, so interesting to me. They, they don't ever tell their age. Let's talk though about, because you brought up an interesting point. That there's a lot of overfilling done. That means overfilling yes. the face. Hollywood what does today, that mean? Ha and in fact, even sometimes where we live on El Paseo, you'll see a little bit of overdoneness, and I think they have too much in their cheeks, too much in their lips. We have we call it the teddy bear look when they have too much around their nasolabial folds and marionette lines and lips. They get kind like of a teddy bear look, or kind of like a real snouty type of look, and it doesn't look natural. And so they're trying to correct some problems, but they're looking kind of artificial plastic and like a teddy bear, instead of looking softer, prettier, younger. So our goal at the office is to have people look natural and restore, have you look softer, younger, fresher. We don't nice. want you to look fake and plastic. Let's talk about under the eyes, bags under the eyes. Absolutely. Do you fill that area? Not always. In very few cases will I try to add to the bag directly under the eye. There's a few people that can get away with filler there, but most people, when it's the under eye bag you're talking about, need to see Dr. Zachary and, and have fat pads removed or have fat added. It's a whole other way to go. So Dr. I'm very Zachary honest. is big on that, by the way. He is. He, he has it down to a fine science. I think there's nothing better that you can do for bags under the eyes than talk to a Adding surgeon. your own fat. Under adding your, your own fat or removing a bag if need be and putting some fat back in. It's the best, most natural, longest lasting way to restore under the eyes. But that said, if it's just a subtle problem, sometimes you can correct right under it and restore the cheekbone area, which will then camouflage under the eyes. So that's what I do. And that's when people come to me. But if it's a little bit, they've waited too long, I refer them to Dr. Zachary. So you do over a thousand Botox uh, procedures a year. Yes. And what about fillers? Would you say you do a thousand filler procedures well, a year? I at least probably go through. I I couldn't say for certain, but I'm estimating probably about a thousand syringes a year. I order like cases of thirty, so you've done forty thousands, at a time. Over a thousand patients of oh, fillers. Oh yes, in in a How year. How long have you been probably. doing fillers, by the way? 16 years. Started with collagen. Years. Back in the day, collagen was all that we had, and so some people will remember that. But now we have so many choices. Are men getting fillers, by the way? Yes. Really? Okay. Yes. I do see a lot of male models that come to me. A lot of them live in South Beach and Palm Springs and come back and forth. And they, they often seem to know each other. So I have quite a clientele. These are good looking models, but they begin to age, but you'd never know it. Is that right? So people, I mean, I mean so fillers, as long as you don't overdo it, because I, we, we've had yes. this discussion. I feel like I could spot overfilling a mile away. Yes. So you, and, and is that in the hands? Is but but I don't know. Is it the patient asking? I want that look, or is we it? We get that. The, or is it the the, it the person? It has to be the injector because I know I will tell people no. I don't. I don't like to tell people no, but at the same time, I'm not going to make somebody look freakish or fake. And so when they want an overfilled look, I do have peers in the desert that will do that and I'll refer them to someone You do else. lips too, right? We haven't talked about lips, but yes. you do lips. Yes, because as we age, we lose lips. So but lips are you like are natural lips popular. too, also. A absolutely. absolutely. There's a lot of that going on too, right? Overfilling lips? Yes, I think that has slowed down quite a bit. We okay. had quite a rage a few years ago where everybody, in town, we're doing those big overdone lips, except for me, I refuse to do them. And I'm not seeing it as much anymore. Is that the trickiest of all of the procedures that you do, is creating a beautiful natural li lip? No, no? I, I think it's probably one of the more simple, personally. Interesting. It's more, I love to do lips, I love full lips, but I like, I want them to look natural. So what's the trickiest for you to do? That the maybe the public doesn't know. I think around the eyes is the most highest technical area to fill. Mm-hmm. 
that said, I, I consider this my artwork. I love to do it. I want to restore, and especially on women, what ages them the most, in my opinion, is around the eyes. Around the so eyes. So that's the area you want to cinch, but that's also the area where you can get very freaky looking if it's not put in correctly. So you've been doing fillers now for 17 or 18 years? 16. 16 well, at least years. 16 years, 16 since 96. Years. Now, experience yeah. matters, and uh, you, you know, people come to me all the time. Mm -hmm. on, on the web, they'll say, who should I do? I said, well, ask the doctor, how many of the specific procedure have you done, or procedures have you done? Yes. How long have you been doing the procedure? And they never ask that question. I'm so uh, surprised. In fact, I teach, I have a lot of snowbirds, we call them in the desert, the Canadians yeah. and people from Montana, and a lot of people that just come out here seasonally. And, and I tell them, if you need to do fillers or Botox touch-ups, um, during the summer when you're not in the desert, make sure you find somebody in your area. Maybe go to um, some of the websites. Make sure they've been doing it at least two years or more. Get word of mouth and take a look at their work because you don't want to go to just anybody. I'd be afraid to go to someone else. Oh, well, thank you, Randy. When do you know you need a filler, by the way? When it's bothering you? Well, <laughs> when if somebody points out you're looking older, if you're seeing well, pictures who says of yours, that? It, Do people well, say that? Yes. You're kidding <laughs> That's, me. I think the number it's one terrible. reason people come to me is somebody pointed out to them that, you know, they're looking older, they're looking <laughs> angry. Or they're, I'll hear this. Oh, they okay. keep saying I look angry and tired and I'm not angry and I'm not tired. Well, that's, that's a good reason. I found that out. You're not supposed to say that to somebody. Well, you, you look angry. I'm not angry, they'll, they'll say. <laughs> exactly. And that often People will drive that to them me. to take a step. And Well, not if your Botox is right, working. Right, no, and then I know I have to go see <laughs> then Peggy. Then you'll know it's time. But I will tell you, I refer everybody to you. And I know Thank the best you. in the business. But how about this? I'm going to do an RN. I'm going to try to stump you here. Not stump you, but put you on the spot. I have certain plastic surgeons that say, well, an mm -hmm. RN probably doesn't do it as well as I do because she doesn't understand the anatomy. That when I'm going in with Botox, I almost see the muscles that I'm that I'm injecting? Well, I would say to What's them, I worked as a first assistant in sh surgery for many years. So I've been in the You've operating room. You've seen hundreds room. of facelifts. Yes, I was, so I know what the muscles look like under the skin. I've been there, done that for many years. So I think that helps me in my practice, that I, I know what it looks like. I know where the muscles are, the blood vessels, the nerve bundles, and you absolutely want your injector to know those things. Okay, Peggy, sure. always a pleasure. Is there anything that when you drove over here, that you wanted to mention that we haven't talked about? Or did we talk about it all? Um, I think we've pretty much covered it. Just, you know, I, I just really feel the need to say I'm so blessed to work for Dr. Zachary and a wonderful group of people that we've been together for many years. And we just like to make people feel hey, You guys feel have all been working around beautiful. each other for a long time. For a long time. And I think we have a really good success rate. And, good. and we love what we do. And we just want people to be happy. All right. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Always thank a pleasure, you, Peggy. Randy. Thank you so much. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you'd like to see this online, you can go to our website at wellnesshour.com and you can put in Botox or you could put in Peggy and you'll find her there. For now, I wish you could help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.